Hello, Harry here. To help support this podcast, you can go to our website, thisisjogon.com, for the Jogon running kit, more episodes and videos. We'd really appreciate if you can give this show a review wherever you're listening or watching from. Thank you. I'm Harry Morgan, and this is Jogon. After a fairly sedentary lifestyle of smoking and very little exercise, at the age of 40, Mark Symes began running, soon realising that he possessed an ability to run fast. I didn't realise I was going to be that quick. He focused on the track and eventually found himself competing in both European and World Masters Championships. I loved the short stuff. I really, really did like it. And it was quite obvious I had a bit of quite a bit of pace. Often in the turbulent 800 and 1500 metre finals. And I was counting down, <laughs> 9, 8, and it sort of went 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one. It went that quickly. I sat down with Mark at his home in southern England to discuss his journey from 40 to now. The highs... Apart from when my children were born, I don't think I've ever felt elation like it. And lows... I literally feel like I'm going to be sick. ...of competing on the global stage and how great running in later life is something that we can all aspire to. Because I think if more people did it, I think they'd really, really enjoy it. So please, welcome to Jog On, the inspiring Mark Symes. Take me back to when you begin running. You did run a little bit um, in childhood up to 14 and then you sort of drop off. At the time, were you doing a bit of track running, a bit of cross country? What did that look like? Yeah, it's a bit of everything, a bit of cross country, mainly cross country, actually, from memory. Um, did a little bit of track work, but not not a massive amount. Yeah, and that was about, I think, at 14 or 15, definitely. And do you remember showing promise? Did you have an ability back then? I probably did, but I was really small, really small, really skinny. Right. Um, hadn't really developed properly. So I think there was a little bit of that probably should have hung on a bit longer and found out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean, guess 14 years early do you remember why it stops is it just other things take over you have social life or social life more than anything else yeah. yeah yeah then skipping forward you're 40 what is it that makes you come back to the running scene why do you make that return well that's down to being a twin unfortunately <laughs> because um my brother had started i think about two or three years prior to that yeah and he'd done marathons and he was doing 10Ks and half marathons, I think. And he basically got me back into it again. Just said, you know, come back, do a bit of running, just see how you get on. And that was basically where it started from. I think I did about a year's worth of park runs first. And then I started to look at, you know, maybe doing a marathon, maybe doing a half. And it just went from there, really. Mm. And it starts to ramp up reasonably quickly. But are you a person who um, gets quite dri- gets quite stuck in something and quite driven? It seems like the way you've approached it, you've certainly, I mean, there's a big journey there and you've put you know, thousands of hours into this. Are you a, a, a bit of a type A personality where you, you really get your teeth stuck in something and think, yeah, I'd really like to develop this? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Does your brother share that? Yes. Yeah, it's a twin thing. So talk to me about when you you get into the the marathon running you've done a huge range of distances you're known for some middle distance stuff certainly 800s and 1500s where you found success in the masters but you've also done as much as marathons so at what point does track come in or do you do you begin with the marathons like where do you come in at at 40 what distances are you approaching or are you experimenting i mean the track didn't really come along until i was about 47 so it was late again it's it was yeah i was near in 50 when i started i think i I think I was 47 when I ran my first track event, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I managed to squeeze four marathons in prior to that. They all got lower, actually. I, did, I think it was 54, 254, 252, 238. That was the big jump. Then 236. 236, I got them in front yeah. of me. 254, 252, yeah. 238, 236. The 238, I think that was in 2013. That was, that was massive. That's 14 minutes off of my PB. And what do you credit that with? Because that was one of my questions. Why, how did you drop a marathon time from 252 to 238? What What did you do? Just getting the mileage in. And being consistent with it. Yeah, and not being injured. That's the other key. There's a lot of injuries mixed in there as well. I had some sort of two or three stress fractures. That I, The reason I stopped doing marathons in the end was you train for 18 weeks, the last three weeks, pick up an injury and can't run. You've done all those miles and it's, 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 it's horrible to get to that stage. So I... I I sort of got a bit fed up with that. I got a bit fed up with doing the long runs, etc. Mm. I'm lazy, basically. I thought, let's go and try something <laughs> sm- something shorter. What do you get from those wins? Are you the kind of person that can, when you cross that line and run a 238, knock a huge amount of time off? Can you look back and, and celebrate? Or are you the kind of person who's quite critical of their own performance and says, oh, but I re- really wanted this time? Is there an elation there when you achieve that? Oh, absolutely. That, there was with that, I can remember. I was looking at try- probably trying to run somewhere near a 245. That was a goal. I think wow. you get a championship place if you run under 245 so that was the goal 
Um, but I knew probably about 15 miles in that I was going to smash my PB. Why is that? You just felt great? Yeah, I felt brilliant, yeah. It's a negative split as well, I think. That That's one. incredible. Because time and time again, we hear about people taking on the marathon and they talk about the 18-mile mark, the 19-mile mark. It, they just start to hit that wall, the legs are getting heavy and they can't maintain the pace. In fairness, the other three were, were terrible. I had really bad time of all of those sort of three, especially the last sort of four or five miles. But the 238, for whatever reason, that was... It just felt really good. I felt really good all the way around. Yeah. yeah. And it's amazing how many people can do a few marathons and never quite hit that perfect race. They don't, they never have that experience. Everything they've, they say it, it sucked for the last few miles or whatever. Weekly mileage around the time. Do you recall like what you kind of got up to? Yeah, it was about between 70 and 80. Anything, anything more than that, bits used to start falling off. And was that mostly slow, steady stuff or were you still injecting some no, pace work? Was, it, it, honestly, it was, I just literally did runs and it was how I felt. Wow. There was no real structure to it. It was, all I was trying to do was reach a certain amount of mileage. Yeah, got up to about 70, 80. But like I say, anything more than that, it did start to break down. Amazing though, an incredible time. As we say, I think the last marathon, I may have the year wrong, I think the last marathon is 2015 um, that you did when you did to Yeah, two... I missed one in between. And it was... Right, skipped 2014 and then... I, I got injured, yeah. You talked about the fact that you got a little bit maybe tired with the long runs and just putting in the sheer amount of mileage. So is is there an element of you stop the marathons because you're just looking for something fresh? You want to change it up a bit? No, I think it, it was. It was just a disappointment of, of picking up an injury during a marathon plan after doing a lot of hard work. Um, it's difficult. I had young kids at the time and trying to fit all the mileage in, you know, work and everything, and then you... you you don't even get a result at the end of it. Yeah, that, that is tough. That was the disappointing bit. So let's move to the track running. You, t you mentioned about 47, you start doing the track racing. Mm. Is there an immediate, oh, wow, this is an explosive, different way of approaching my running, or does it take a bit of time for you to enjoy the, the track racing? I think when I first went to Aldershot, the very first track session we had down there, I can't remember what it was. I think it was 300s or 200s, I can't remember. I, f I felt... I didn't realise it was going to be that quick. In fact, before I joined Aldershot, I thought that I would be OK on the longer rep stuff and I would struggle on the on the shorter stuff, obviously because I've been doing lots of, of long, slow runs. It was actually the opposite. Um, I loved the short stuff. I really, really did like it. And it was quite obvious I had a bit of quite a bit of pace and quite a good change of pace as well. So then that made me think, well, let's try... I, try, I think I tried a couple of 1500s, uh, did OK. Did an eight at the Vets League, I think one Monday night and that was my first 800 and that I think it was about 210 mm. and I hated every second of it it just <laughs> happened so quickly and it was like you didn't yeah. have time to think and that's so explosive yeah and I, I thought then well I'm not going to do any of this I'll stick with 15s and perhaps 15s and 3 or 5k's yeah you plug away at it and just kept getting quicker and quicker and the quicker you got you know it just goes from there. And the nice thing with 800 and 1500 is there's no denying a number. Like you run a time, you can go and look at what the masters, what they're requiring for times at championships yeah, yeah. and whatnot. So you must have been looking at a time thinking, yeah, I'm getting, these times are good. Yeah, I thought I'd be competitive. I was always, I always thought I could be competitive, you know, top. I'd, I'd want to get into a final at least, you know, have a half a chance to perhaps nick a medal. Yeah. But it wasn't until I started doing that and, I think it was the second, the second champion. I went to I went to Denmark. That was my first championship. That was a European, and I uh, got to the airport and I was just I wasn't very well. I put all this effort in and I was in good shape, really good shape. And I got to the airport. I, I bought a sandwich and I, I, I even to look at the sandwich, I felt I couldn't even eat it. I, I got all the way out to Denmark and. Uh, I lost about half a stone, and when you only weighed ten stone, it's quite a lot of weight. <laughs> yeah. And um, got through to the final. I didn't really eat for four days. Wow. Um, and I ran a PB in the final, even though I was not very competitive. But I took a lot out of that. I thought, you know, if you can run this well, um, I think I come. Yeah, I come sixth. I thought if I can come sixth, and you're not feeling too good I, was, I just felt so weak give it another go yeah there's big potential here to do to do more it seems like when you went away and did these championships 800s and 1500s cropped up i want to talk to you about particularly your wins in poland um in 2019 you run 202 in the 800 and you run um a 417, 417. yeah i'm sure it's etched in your memory what was that what was that experience like is it surreal is it just uh, a joyous moment is it do you get nervous on the start line i'm terrible for nerves i literally feel like I'm going to be sick in the morning. It's all the pre-race stuff. It's not the race. Once I get to the stadium, it's fine. It's, I get warmed up, do a few strides. 
I'm I'm perfect once I get to that. Getting to even in the call room, I'm fine. It's 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 the morning. It's it's oh, honestly I've I still and I still I've done so many championships now and I still I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm getting worse. Not <laughs> it's terrible. Um, I don't really know what to do about the nerves. To be quiet, I'm not sure if there's any way of getting over it. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's a good thing anyway. But well, it probably is certainly the adrenaline is there, ready for you to race. Your body's getting it. it's just maybe happening a bit a bit early. Yeah, I've noticed that in the small amount of track running that I have done. Um, certainly a few years ago when I did some 800 bits and pieces I definitely have felt more nervous in those it's almost like entering the Colosseum there's something about particular for me it's yeah, indoor I, I, track I, I as well I understand that yeah yeah it's a little bit um, claustrophobic at times you're huddled in ready to go everyone's there in the vest you can you can smell the the deep heat and you know there's there's a there's an atmosphere to it that I think mm. adds to that pressure a little bit I don't know how you feel but for me it was always I always felt like I couldn't make a mistake in a marathon you can, oh, you can you screw can, up yeah. a half mile and it doesn't matter you just make it up 800 meters you can't make mistakes can't make mistakes especially indoor as I found out yes if you go to a tournament before that this is um was at Malaga well it was after I'd done the Denmark thing this was um it was a bit of a free hit because I was about three weeks from being 50. So Tad, coach, said to me, look, just go out there, just try and get through to a final, another bit of champion experience. So I went out, I ran the 800, um, I did a PB in the semi-final, won both my heats, got through to the final, made a few mistakes, ended up coming fourth. Came back home and I wasn't going to run the 15, but I came back home a bit disappointed after coming fourth. Went back out there, managed to run a PB in the 1500 heat. And then I won the, won that final, and that's that's where it really sort of started for me on the track. That's when you saw I sort of thought I could be half decent at this. It wasn't particularly quick time, but I got the tactics perfect. I was in about ninth place, I think, with about one hundred and two fifty to go. Yeah, went to go past um, I think it's Mark Williams, the American, and I sort of got boxed in a little bit, so I had to wait till one fifty to go. Went round him, and I was, I was sort of counting down in my head. I was thinking I've got to get a place definitely got after the disappointment of the 800 I've, I've got to try and nick a medal here and I was counting down <laughs> nine eight and it sort of went seven six five four three two one it went that quickly wow apart from when my children were born, I don't think I've ever felt elation like it interesting yeah it's 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 mad but then I moved up to to a, obviously if I moved up age groups to 50 and then I was the I was the favorite then and that's a completely different completely different angle but I just remembered going going to Turin. Well, f firstly, after after Malaga, there was a little bit of you get this down after this big high, and I was struggling for motivation. Really, it was only the fact that I'd moved up a year. I think I got that extra kick of motivation. So I went there as favourite, but I I was in very very good shape. But the eight hundred metres, everything that could have gone right for me and wrong for everybody else happened. So people stepped out in front of other people as they were trying to go. Um, I got clipped, and that, nine times out of ten, that's decisions are made in a race, and that decision was I got clipped, and I just thought I'd go to the front and stay out of the way, and it was as simple as that. And then when I got to the front, I just hung on, basically. But that's that's what happens in races. I don't try to pre-plan too much when it comes to how I'm going to race. Just try to respond in the moment a little bit. Yeah, you, I have a few, like, three or four different scenarios. Oh, it's going to be a really slow race, I do this. It's going to be a really quick race, I do that. But my way of running back, back then, not so much in Torum, but before that, prior to that, would be... I would sit at the back, sit out the way, and then build it up, and try and do, try and run them like that, which worked. But but um, I think when I got to fifty and I was I was in good form, I, I could I could take a risk and go off the front. That sitting at the back usually uh, conveys a confidence in your kick, and you are someone that has a strong yeah. kick. Do you always sort of keep in check on that each year as as you get older? Do you always think, have I still got it? Oh, I think that every time I come to a new tournament, I, <laughs> I haven't got it. Yeah, but I mean, I probably have lost a yard of pace, but. It's still there, I think. You mentioned that that feeling of elation. What is that? Is it is it partly relief from all the nerves and all the build-up? Is it just the payoff from all the hard work? And you think back on all those times you've you've had. Is it just? Do you just enjoy the the victory? I think all, all three. Yeah, definitely a bit of a bit of relief um, because you could go there, you could be in brilliant form and still not win the race. You know, loads of things can go wrong during a race. So, yeah, it's probably a little bit of that. But yeah, you know, I work hard. I do. I, I work hard. I train hard, and I've had a bit of payback. Well, oh, quite, absolutely. I've been quite lucky. It must be amazing. Uh, I mean, there must have been a moment when you first put the GB vest on, and that, that in of itself must be not only a bit surreal, but yeah, it's, it's got to be a proud moment, and it, you think, wow, I've really come a long way that I'm wearing yeah. a vest saying Great Britain on right yeah. now. And GB have got a lot of really, really good runners as well, and I've made a lot of friends as well. That's the other thing. A lot of really good friends. So I know we briefly referenced about how 
errors can lead to difficult races at this middle distance. If you don't mind, I've got to ask you about <laughs> Portugal, yeah. which is um, an interesting, it's an 800 meter final. You'll have to sort of explain it. I mean, I understand I've raced on indoor tracks, I've run 800 meters, but there's a lot of people out there who've only ever known 10K road running, half marathons, marathons, etc. And it, it is almost a different sport. It's a different world track running. And when you get to the tightness of a 200 meter indoor track, I don't know how you feel, but personally, the 200 meter indoor track is about the most pressure I've ever felt in a race because it's you're oh, so it's boxed in. It's so tight and you've got men jostling for mm. positions and it gets very tricky for people that don't know this you can talk me through what happened and i've watched it back on video but there's sort of an element of you're getting boxed in and it just seems like you're trying to strike but you can't quite make your way out but then you don't want to go too wide to come around just talk me through that race and what your memories are of of that run that 800 meter final in portugal how did it happen Okay. I, I mean, I got pretty much everything wrong that I could have got wrong. <laughs> um, I won, won my heat in 2-4, and I felt really comfortable, to be quite honest. And it ended up being a slow race. That's the, the really horrible thing about that. It was, I think it was 1-2-7. in two, seven. But um, I got a half-decent start and then didn't really carry it on. Sat back in. The problem with the indoor track is it goes so quickly because you're literally it's half a straight turn, half a straight turn. Before you know it, the laps are coming down. I remember getting to the bell and thinking, <laughs> you're going to have to hurry up here. Got out and I got into a really good position. And then I went up the inside rather than going up the outside. Um, I went up the inside. I think it was uh, Alonso I went up the inside of. What was the thinking Al there? Alfonso. Just, just wanted to try to get the best line? or Yeah, Al Alfonso had left me a little gap on the inside and I, I tried to go up the inside, ended up bumping him, losing momentum. I stepped off the track, so I would have got DQ'd anyway. Right. And then, then I managed to get into my stride and I, I, I caught the guys fairly quickly. But I just had nowhere else to go and I sort of basically went through the middle of them. And it's mad because when you cross the line, like three or four guys behind you then absolutely stack it. They fall I've over got, as well. Yeah, there's a great photo of that actually with everyone. Oh, I'd I mean, love how, to see how, that. How can that how can that skinny little bloke <laughs> knock all them over? <laughs> but I sent a message uh, no, my mate sent me a message afterwards and said, uh, look, I've I've heard you've um heard you've been DQ'd, what happened? I so I just said, like I tried to get through a gap that wasn't there. And uh, he just texts back, must have been a very small gap. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a dramatic race. Um, yeah. I, well, I was watching it unfold. I, wow, I mean, so much happening. You could watch that through five times mm. and see something different about where certain guys are going at certain times. It's incredible. You realise, in that moment, you realise how tactical an 800-metre race can be and how important those tactics can be. I think, you know, looking back, I'm much better off, even if I've got to run an extra, you know, few, few metres to go wide, just stay out of trouble, yeah. basically. It's a good learning experience, yeah, for sure. it happens, you know. But like I say, indoors in the eight, it happens so quickly, you just, it's over in a, in a blink. One thing I want to ask you about, Mark, is having turned 50, having this slightly different story from other people I've spoken to on this podcast who talk about, you know, they ran when they were 15 right through to 35 now, whatever it is. And you have this, this huge gap from 14 to 14 and you come in and start finding tremendous success and fantastic speed. Is there a part of you that credits being as, as strong and as fast as you are at this age? Do you ever wonder if there's an element of like you haven't worn yourself out by having years and years of running? Yeah, I think there is a, a, is a bit of that because... If you look at the runners that have carried on all the way through, they're the ones that now are probably struggling a little bit more. Whereas I was, I came in fresh and it was all new and I'm still doing PBs. I did a PB this year and I think it's all a little bit more, it's it's fresh for me, isn't it? Yeah. So both mentally fresh and physically fresh, yeah. I suppose. Yeah. But well, I've been fairly lucky, to be quite honest. I've had lower limb fractures, but generally, especially these last two or three years, I don't want to tempt fate. But I've managed to stay fairly fit. I know I, I talked about this to you just, just now, but from 14 to 40, what does the lifestyle look like? Are you maintaining any fitness during that time? No. <laughs> I, I probably did the odd bit of the odd game of tennis and the odd bit of five-a-side football, but not much. And obviously smoking and uh, probably drinking too much, if I'm honest. And do you ever wonder how at 40 it all flips? I know you say about the, the twin brother comes in, encourages you and you, you start out and, um, as you've said, you go for you know just a, just a mile and realise how, how unfit you are and then slowly find a love for it, really, and, and start to really get your, your teeth stuck into it. it. It's a little bit of a heavy question, Mark, but do you ever look back on 14 to 40 and do you lament at all that you didn't? Because you've shown such ability in your 40s and 50s at running. Do you ever think back and think, I wonder what would have happened at 25? Yeah, I think if I'd have perhaps allowed myself to get a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger maybe I would have turned into half decent runner but it's all ifs and buts no point worrying about it now and you might not be doing now what you would have done because you might be one of those yeah. people who are, is a bit broken down because of doing yeah. huge mileage throughout your life I think if you are going to be fit or try and stay fit from 40 onwards is probably a 
brilliant time to do that, isn't it? Mm. One of the things about your story as well is it does put out a bit of a message of hope for people who are looking at what they're going to do once they hit 40, once they hit 50, who are running great times. They're like 28, 29. You mm. get this like sort of, um, there's almost like a, a, an aging fear out there. And people say, oh, well, I've only got 10 years left. Yeah. And I think your testament to the fact that you can have not just great running, but a successful career in in running uh, where you can really run some superb times and go to these championships. Do you feel like Masters is up and coming? Is it growing all the time? I think it is, but there's not a lot of money in it. That's the problem. AW did used to do quite a bit on the Masters, but since they've gone monthly, it's hard to squeeze the Masters stuff in as well. When there was every two weeks, it was you did used to get quite a bit in there. But yeah, generally, there's not that much publicity and stuff for it which is a shame because I think if more people did it I think they'd really really enjoy it well I think the narrative out there is can be a little bit sort of like whoa once you pass 37 like you mm-hmm. know it's almost like shut off like look for something else people use the term retirement all the time and they're in their 30s and then sometimes I think it's a bit of a shame that we don't sort of have a narrative that encourages people to yeah, yeah. run until you're 75 if you can if, you, if your body doesn't break down and you're doing it sensibly keep going why not if you go back to when you were 40 are there many differences in the way that you train or the way that you recover now being in the 50s do you find that you have to do anything approach anything differently because you're not 40 anymore or so far has it stayed about the same well i didn't train as hard then as i do now but i train differently so i wasn't doing as much i was only probably training back when i was 40 i was only training four days a week then when i went to training six to seven days a week that's obviously i noticed that there's a big a big difference then in, especially you know you could start to see the times coming down so that was a big jump then but then when i got to 50 all I really started to do then was just maybe not do as many reps as everybody else, have lots, slightly longer recoveries, that sort of thing. Just adapt it a little bit more. And that's uh, once again, that was down to Tad. Tad's, uh, he's very good at that. He's constantly telling me to, to back off a bit, don't do the last rep, you know. Sometimes you need that voice there, yeah. that person who is sort of uh, taming you a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Because, you, of course, you're a naturally competitive person. You want to yeah. keep attacking, keep attacking. And sometimes it's helpful. Um I wanted to switch over to Parkrun and mention that because for people listening to this, they might think you're a track guy, you've done the marathons, but you actually have quite a strong association with Parkrun, namely Frimley Lodge being your local Parkrun, that you have attended very consistently. And even over time, you see you um, starting Frimley Lodge years back kicking out about four very low 20s and then dropping through the 19s, through the 18s, through mm. the 17s. You eventually run a 1605 or a 1606, I forget the exact time, at Frimley Lodge. 1608. 1608. You run that 1608. What, for you, what has Parkrun meant? It seems to have been a staple that Saturday morning for you. Is it the consistency of it? Do you enjoy the community aspect? Yeah, all of that, really. Consistency. Um, I like to get up on a Saturday morning. It, it gets you out of bed. Community. I've met so many lovely people there. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've stolen a few for, for the club as well. All the shot. Uh, a lot of people, you know, that prob- I probably wouldn't have met and they probably wouldn't have ended up at the club. I was thinking about this the other day about Parkrun, though. I mean, if... If you could pretend there's a world without parkrun mm. and someone came up to you now and, and said, I've got this idea and they, they run through what a parkrun's about, I'd be thinking, that's never, ever going to work. I, I still don't quite understand how it does work. It doesn't make sense, does it? It's, you know, especially it's free <laughs> and volunteers and it just, I just don't get it. I think, you know, I would, <laughs> I'd honestly think someone's mad. It's, I'd just be thinking, who's going to do it? Who would go to it? You know, good runners not going to go because it's going to be for joggers. Joggers wouldn't go because they're going to think it's going to be for good runners. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a weird concept, and I just still don't quite. I can't put my finger on it why it does work. It's quite remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. And you're absolutely right. It's um, that concept is an amazing one, and it's not. But it, and it's not just that. Like, oh, it works. You get some people turning up. It's like so successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People love it, and not just in this country, all over the world. So it's not just a UK thing. And just shows that it is for anyone, everyone, right through from a Masters 800 metres athlete Hmm. to someone who's just started running. You know, it just shows the vast scope of people that can can do it. One question I had for you before I move on to the final question, Mark, is it's, it's a difficult one. But if you had to pick a distance that you are the most fond of, because you are someone that has done such a range. I chat to people who are really just five and ten cares. I've chat to people who are really just done you know, the odd half and, and full and then the odd sprinter. Is there a fondness that you take away from one distance in particular? Is it, is it something fast and explosive on the track? Or do you have very fond memories from all that marathon work? What, what have you enjoyed the most throughout your running career so far? We enjoyed. Um, <laughs> Maybe that's different from yeah, uh, <laughs> success. No, I love... I love the track. That is that is my thing. I love the track. Um, but I do have a fondness for the marathon. I'm, I can remember always watching the marathon, even when I wasn't running. 
Um, and even watching the marathon a couple of weeks ago, it just it brings it all back. You think, look, if I've always said, if I became uncompetitive on the track, then I would go back to do it and I would give the marathon another go, one more go. What hurts more, the final few miles of a marathon or the last few hundred metres of an 800? What, what's more painful? Depends what position you're in. <laughs> do you have to go to a darker place for one of them? Yeah, the marathon, you've got to dig it out, yeah. The track stuff, like I say, if, if you're coming down the home straight and you've got a lead, yeah, there's no pain there. No, a marathon is, I think the marathon's a, a proper test because you're not just running 26 miles, you're doing it quick as well. Yeah. That's where the um, the difficulty is. But no, definitely, um, yeah, the track, I just love the track. For anyone listening, Mark, sometimes they look at people like yourself and they go, well, what, are, what are they doing behind the scenes? You see the track performance, you see you run and get a gold medal at the Masters, but sometimes we don't always see behind the scenes. So roughly at the moment, or even if not at the moment, a sort of peak training, what does a, a typical week look like? What are the track sessions and, and how much sort of long, slow running are you doing as a 15 and 800 metre runner still? Well, it's, it's slightly different. It's slightly different when I'm coming up to a competition, obviously. I tend to back off a little bit on the mileage, bring up the speed a little bit. But generally, as a general um, week would be, Monday, Wednesday and Friday would just be um, recovery runs and they'd be about 10k. Park run on Saturday, long run on a Sunday, roughly about 10, 10 to 12 in the summer and 10 to 14 in the winter. And then it would be the two sessions at the, at the, uh, at the club and that'll be... Um, probably one track session and then one on the road and the, or the grass mm. you know some 400s some mile reps some k reps you know there's loads of different stuff we do when you're specifically training for eight eights and 15s in particular what's the kind of longest rep you would do on the track how, how high a distance would you go up to i would still do some 600s 600s 800s yeah it doesn't really affect the distance too much i wouldn't be doing smashing out mile reps and stuff but mm. tend to the closer we get to a tournament it would be i'd like to come down take a lot more recovery between my reps so the, the quality of the reps basically get that up and the other thing we do as well so if tad set us say 12 400s i would only do six and i'd do every other one so that i'm fresh every time i come in and then i would run them quite hard that sort of stuff we'd do but um generally it, it, it doesn't really differ from that too much to be quite honest and i think that leads me on mark to ask you about the future now i mean bar of course there's always highs and lows getting boxed in in a final some of the injuries and whatnot but mm. by and large one has to take a look at the power of 10 your career so far and and certainly use the word success it's been a, a highly successful career and you've done um some amazing things so, which leads me on to t talk about the next decade Are there any sort of unchecked boxes are there any particular distances you'd still like to medal at um what do you what do you think you'd like to do with your running uh, distance wise and goal wise i don't want to change the distance too much unless like i say unless I, if i became uncompetitive then i would think about possibly going back to the marathon but generally i want to stay on the track as long as i can keep that speed up as long as i can and just try and nick as many medals as i can i think that's the main thing try and experience some more of that yeah. elation well mark it's been brilliant chatting to you and i think it's a really nice angle as well because you're in this master's category i think it's a it's sort of a beacon of hope for many people that there is running beyond 40 mm. if you ignore the general nar narrative as absolutely fantastic running to be had and people also often also think well if they do think about running in the 50s they go oh, well it's pr probably a, a bit of a marathon here or some ultras and and your example that fast twitch muscles exist still they they are there and you, there is speed to be had yeah and i wouldn't have found that out if i hadn't joined all i probably would never have run on the track and there's got to be other people out there that that have never run on the track before so i'm sure just got to try it yeah i'm a huge proponent of track training i, I love it and i think it's very scary for a lot of people but once you get a couple of sessions out of the way mm -hmm. even if you're not someone who's a natural speed demon there's there's something for everyone there it's an incredibly Absolutely, enjoyable yeah. experience i think yeah. um well, Mark, thank you very much for talking to me. It's been really great. Thanks for having me on. We produce podcast episodes and videos to connect people through a love of running and adventure. We'd really appreciate if you can give this show a review wherever you're listening or watching from. Thank you. To find out more or to support us, you can purchase the Jogon running kit from the Jogon shop at thisisjogon.com. I'm Harry Morgan. Go for that run. And this is Jogon. Jogon.